Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, and fishing needs, go to eastport.info. Now let's get this show started. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Bass Thumbs Fishing Podcast, where we are constantly trying to keep our thumbs ripped up. Tonight, we are back at it. I've taken a couple weeks off. It's been super busy. We've had we had an incredible weekend last weekend. Took my family down to the ABA Ironman series down at San Vicente and the KBF Trail and Pro Series. And we just had a phenomenal time down there. We stayed at Santee Lakes. I was able to take my trailer down there. I was able to vlog the whole experience. And we ended up taking home uh, a first place finish in the trail series down there at San Vicente on, on trail number two on Sunday. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that a little bit later in this episode. But man, it was just an incredible time. The show out from the anglers and the camaraderie and, you know, being with everyone on Friday night at the dinner and then going into the weekend and, and seeing how everyone, you know, did so well. Um, it was just a fun time to fish in SoCal. The fish at San Vicente were biting and it was just, it was a, it was a really fun time out there. The size was a little bit tougher to come by, but there were a few guys that figured out that deeper bite that, that, you know, those, those fish that were out there kind of in all three stages of the, of, of the spawn. And there was fish that had already spawned that had moved out fish that were coming up to spawn as well and and for those guys that figured that kind of deeper bite out it seemed like that's where the bigger fish were and man it was it was just an incredible time uh, we had 43 anglers show up for the kbf side of things we had 38 show up for the aba side of things and we are officially at three events so there's you know our three our best three events are now in place and we have tonight we have uh, dominic doan and we got Brian Voigt as well coming in from the um, Wild West win that he just took up at the Delta. But Dominic is going to be starting us off tonight. He won the Pro Series for the KBF side of things. Had a phenomenal weekend. He also won the ABA Ironman Series. And it's just it was really cool to see someone cash a huge check in Southern California. I think Dominic took home just under $7,000 and some incredible hardware. And just had a great time. But a couple of housekeeping things before we bring Dominic on tonight. Uh, first things first is what's coming next for the ABA is the Working Man series. We got the Working Man series coming out. The Working Man series is is a is a new kind of cutting edge month long event where anglers are going to be able to fish on Friday, Saturday, Sunday throughout the month of May. It's sixty five dollars to sign up. If you guys want to find out more information about that series, um, there's it's going to be it's going to be really cool because there's five regions. And there's going to be two events at, at each region, so May and June. And there's going to be 10 winners, and those 10 winners are going to qualify for a championship and go to Lake Havasu Landing and cas Resort and Casino and have a shot at winning like just a ton of cash, a Hobie kayak, and it's just going to be really fun. So if you guys want more information on that, make sure you guys check out the ABA American Bass Kayak Series on Instagram or Facebook. You guys can find out all the information there. Also coming up next – for the Ironman series is Lower Otai is coming 20, June 25th and 26th. Lower Otai is going to be a blast at the end of June. There's going to be a ton of grass, toolies, and it's going to be it's going to fish really fun. There's going to be frogs. There's going to be chatterbaits, senkos. It's going to be a really good time out there, so make sure you guys um, keep your eye out for that. It's coming up on June 25th, 26th. That's also going to be paired up with a KBF trail series and a pro series as well to give our anglers out here on the West coast, a shot at AOI for KBF, make it into the 10 house and win some cool hardware that we'll show you guys tonight that Dom won. And it's just, man, it's going to be a good night tonight. Um, also we got SoCal kayak anglers is going to be having a tournament at San Vicente next weekend. So check out SoCal kayak anglers on Instagram and go get some more information about that. Also Yakabass is going to be hitting the Delta in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you guys go hit up Yakabass for more info on that like i mentioned before wild west just had a tournament at the delta which brian won and we have on him on here tonight we'll hear from him later about how he won it up at the delta they had a really great turnout somewhere around 70 to 80 anglers and uh, brian took home the big fish and the win so can't wait to hear 
the details about that event coming up um, tonight. Let's see. We also have on June 5th, I believe, California Bass Nation is going out to Lake Comanche, I want to say. I'm sorry if I messed that up. But follow California Bass Nation Kayak Series on Instagram. You guys can see all the information on their series as well. Man, I am having a blast, by the way, you guys, covering this West Coast um, kayak scene. Gotten a ton of feedback from you guys. Really enjoying covering all these different anglers and showcasing their talents here at the Bass Thumbs Fishing Podcast on the Paddle and Fin Network. And we can't wait to hear from Mr. Dominic Doan. So let's go ahead. Without further ado, let's bring in uh, Mr. Dominic Doan, double digit angler. What's up, Dom? Hey, what up? I had to bring down the trophy for you, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did, dude, because let's just start with that, Dominic, because l- let's bring that trophy in a little bit closer if you can. And let's let's show that thing off, dude, because that that is honestly probably one of the most impressive trophies that I've seen personally. That thing was shipped to my house. so I got teased with it a little bit, but that thing is is he- pretty heavy, right, Dom? I mean, that's some serious hardware. Oh yeah, I can bench. I can do bench press with this thing. This bad boy, <laughs> probably like twenty reps, thirty reps. I don't know. <laughs> Man, dude. Well, dude, I, I am so stoked that you won. And for those of you guys that are watching, um, Dominic also creates a ton of content on YouTube, and he has his little tag down there already. So he's double digit angler on YouTube. And if you guys want to go check out like the literal entire like series that he put together of his practice days and everything please go follow him and, and subscribe to him on YouTube and check that out. But Dom, congratulations, bro. It was a super fun weekend out there. And let's just go ahead and kind of just walk us through your experience, dude. And just kind of talk about, hold on. Let me, let me take a little breather for a second. Let's talk about who Dominic Doan is. How did you start fishing? This is your first time making an appearance on, on the podcast. So how did you, how did you fall in love with fishing? Who's Dominic Doan? So uh, it all started, I mean, I, I bet all, everybody from the club, from American Bass, kayak bass fishing, all have like a similar story. Uh, my dad brought me to Choice Lake over in San Diego, my hometown, and uh, I caught my first like, I believe it was like a six or seven pound catfish. And my dad thought it was a snag, or I thought it was a snag. And then I handed it over to my dad, and I was like, Dad, I think we got snagged again. And then uh, he was he, he felt it tugging a little bit, so he handed it back to me. And it was like the most epic fight I ever had with a catfish. But uh, that's how it all got started. And then I moved to Santa Rosa, uh, decided to, to just have a different environment. And I visited Sonoma Lake because I was bored and I brought these little trout spinner baits um, or uh, it was like a cast master. And so I'm at Yordi Creek and I cast down some riffraff and I'm like trying to catch bluegill and panfish and crappie and et cetera. And I hook into something big and it was just taking drag, spinning out drag. I bring it up and it's like a three and a half pound bass. And I was just like, dude, I'm instantly hooked. So I stopped by um, the outdoor pro shop over in Sonoma County, and uh, it's in Ro- Ronart Park. And uh, there's a gentleman named Mike. He hooked me up with his with a float tube, and uh, and my first Cronark reel, and he got me all started in it. And then I researched uh, Sonoma County Belly Boat Bass Club, joined their club in 2007, won Rookie of the Year. Um, that's my my grassroots is is that of a belly boat and kick boat. Dom, I'm gonna stop you right there because yeah, I know you remember this, but we were up at Clear Lake when Alex yep. won like 15 million dollars, and uh, we were in the parking lot, and I just remember like you know seeing you there and you're like hey man like are you shane like i see on youtube sometimes and then we yeah. started talking and then yeah you were fishing the during that event you didn't have a kayak right or did you i did i you did, did have, have a kayak, kayak. yeah but you weren't you weren't in the event that we were in you were in that you were in the other event and you the had Sonoma like fishing the live yeah. yeah you had like fishing your live well and stuff and i remember brad um was fishing kind of you know kind of somewhat by you and and watching mm-hmm. you schwack them and and you, you were talking about how great, you know, how great you did that day. But it was interesting to see, like, from that moment forward. So you had a kayak, but how come you weren't fishing, like, 
you know that event i guess like what like what held you back or did you know uh, about the event or did you know about the scene yet or were you kind of new or what i actually i knew the event was going to be simultaneous with the club event but yeah. i really didn't like this was my first time hopping back into bass fishing i took a long break um so i bought my 106 top water and that was my first kayak ever so wow. i kind of wanted to warm up to the kayak scene um you know watching greg blanchard videos all the time i was watching your videos honestly i came up to you guys on the launch ramp and i was like hey nice to meet you like i watched your youtube videos shane yeah. like i'm gonna i'm gonna fish your series eventually but i need to warm up to it because i mean you, you guys have some hammers you guys have some hammers over at american bass so yeah and now look at you you got a freaking huge trophy behind you so so now <laughs> after after going from clear lake i remember you know you kind of mm -hmm. from clear lake i feel like we we started talking a little bit on social media and then i remember you calling me you know talking to me about kbf i think and then you were you were kind of thinking about you were going on you were fishing kbf how did you qualify for the national championship because i know you went to the national championship last year so how did that how did that all work out let's start let's kind of go there for a second you know it's all my curiosity started off at american bass and urban angler club yeah uh shout out to kirk they're super friendly and uh i was competing against gilbert garcia over at the lagoon and he told me that he's going to cattle lake he's doing it um and he's been participating in the kbf state monthly so i decided yeah. to do my first kbf state monthly challenge i won that tournament my first one ever going into it and then somehow i qualified for the national championship yeah that that's how you qualified yeah then. yeah yep okay and then uh i was like you know that's kind of a that's a big deal to me and or that's that's a big trip i don't know if i can do it yeah and i posted on my story um i don't think i can make it you know i don't think i'm going to do the national championship yeah and then my girlfriend dm'd me and she was like why aren't you going <laughs> and i took that as like go do it go yeah. do it and i was like one and a half weeks out i was like i'm gonna pack my bags i'm gonna book the motel and i'm just gonna go over there and just do it yeah so I, I bought maybe a 120 PDL one or two months before that to upgrade to a 12 footer, bought my pedal drive, car topped it on my little Honda Fit, rode all the way to Louisiana <laughs> and competed against 350 anglers that and uh, so had sick. one practice day. Yeah. So, so, okay. I feel like this is very important so people can get to know like really like your story. So, yeah. So from Clear Lake to SoCal, you decided to, you, you hopped into the Urban Anglers and then you fished some ABA events with us, right? I remember you fishing yes. some ABA events with us. Yeah. And then you fished a month long, you qualified. And then now it's like, so from May, May was Clear Lake to November was the national championship, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 So five months, right? Yep. So yep. five months you fished and then you went to the national championship. And you're on your way out to Cattle Lake with a Honda Fit, rooftopping a 120 PDL, no motor, yeah. no live scope, no nothing, just just a, a unit, a Garmin unit or something, right? You had yep. some sort of unit on there. And I remember we talked a couple of times before that, and we were talking while you were there. And my, my father-in-law, Greg, made the trip. Um, there were a few guys that made the trip out there. And you go out there, you said you had one day of practice. Yeah. And then you found a, a chatterbait bite, I remember. And then how tell people how you did it your first ever <laughs> your first ever national championship for KBF with one day of practice. I believe I took 37th place out of 350. Yeah. Top I mean 40 that, that is 350. That's incredible. And um, you know, smash them on a chatterbait, go out there do really well at the NC. I just remember that whole, you know, your whole story about that. And then you're creating content. And I believe that video is doing really well right now. Right. Too. I mean, you're, those videos are doing pretty well for the NC videos. Right. Yeah. I think I got over 
that leaped me from having only 300 subscribers all the way to like 700 subscribers. Yeah. Just like that. And it's still, it's still pretty popular. Yeah. And, and then after the NC, you come back, um, not a whole lot going on. I don't think the, and then did you come out to the TOC for ABA? No, I didn't. Um, I didn't fish enough ABA tournaments. Yeah. I, I went in pretty much halfway through or actually yeah. with only two events. Uh, with only two events remaining, and I tried yeah. to qualify for the West Coast Championship, but um, there was one spot I got beat out from the Paris tournament. It was a pretty okay. tough tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So then, this year goes by, and then you're you started to fish just like you started to fish like crazy. You mm -hmm. bought my kayak, my old kayak, and yep. that put you in an XI three and a bona fide SS one twenty seven. And then you get a upgraded Garmin unit, then you get live scope. And now Dominic comes into 2022 with confidence from the NC, a brand new setup. And you go out to Lake Paris. I remember you went out, you're out at Paris for the ABA and you did pretty well. You took top like seventh or sixth or something like that. You took top 10. Yeah, seven. Yep. And then, which was an extremely tough event. And then going into the Delta, Dominic literally misses out, you know, from winning the Delta tournament by not even an inch, like a half inch or a quarter inch, right? Something like that. It was uh, 0.75, yeah, three yeah. quarters of an inch. Had a heck of a tournament at the Delta, and now we're just leading right up to San Vicente, and yeah. you're going into San Vicente with a crazy amount of confidence, f still, you know, relatively fairly new, but killing it. And you go into San V, you get a couple days of practice, and we don't need to dive into you know like every specific detail, Dom, because it'll you know it could take a quite some 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 time. Yeah. But but you had a really good practice. Now let's talk about San V, dude. Let's bring up to San V. That's why you're on the show tonight, and you won the Pro Series and the Ironman Series, and just yep. unpack that for us. All right, so a uh, huge shout out to my parents. My parents live in San Diego, so that took care of a lot of the expenses but um went over to san vicente i knew i was gonna take this practice seriously because i don't have i mean this is my first last month was my first month of fishing san vicente i've never fished san vicente in my life so i knew i had to cover a lot of water during practice so i started off on the first day on the uh, the east end um, and then I worked my way all the way to the West end on the second day and I found fish offshore, but I also found fish shallow. Um, oh, not fish shallow. I found fish over at like the ditches and the channels of, of coves and found fish on finesse. Turns out like the bigger fish were eating finesse, but I was catching like 10 bass a day on jerk baits on the east side so i really made a game game time decision to to ditch the jerkbait bite and go finesse um and use my garmin electronics to to find those fish in the channel uh day one i had like 80 i had 79.5 inches in the first half an hour on a drop shot and uh i tell you what in socal Drop shot and Nico rig is a must because we got clarity from 10 to 10 to 20 feet over here. You don't get that clarity over in Northern California, like Clear Lake, the Delta, you got like what, four or five, maybe max 10 feet visibility. Uh, maybe. So <laughs> maybe, but very unlikely. So going over to SoCal, I learned a lot about finesse fishing. So I'm no longer calling a spinning rod a fairy wand because I absolutely believe that a fairy, uh, I'm sorry, a spinning rod can catch big, straight up. Big. I mean, Shane caught a big fish the second day, like a, what was it? The 20.75 20. inch. Yeah. 20, 20 and a half, 20 and a half. Yeah. 20 and a half. Yeah. So, and I know Bryce, was on a fairy, Bryce, Bryce's big one was on a fairy wand too. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> spinning rods, I hate to say it, but I have a minimum of three, three spinning rods on my boat now every single time. Um, second day was a little bit of different, a little bit different. There was a lot more fish 
suspended out in the open, main lake points, uh, protective coves. And I'm literally, um, I have my boat facing the lake parked on the bank pretty much within like five feet of the bank. And I'm pointing my bow outwards with my uh, electronics and I'm using forward facing technology, the Garmin 93 SB live scope, uh, UHD unit. And I'm seeing fish suspending in two feet, three feet, five feet, 10 feet over about 30. And I'm casting right to them and they're hitting it on the fall every single time. And it was an epic day of fishing, uh, fell off my boat, lost my tantrum a little bit. Uh, that, you know, that was my fault. Uh, that's so silly of me. I, I'm getting in a habit of falling off Dom, my boat. Like, Dom, <laughs> loves the, Dom, Dom loves the water for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thankfully, my PFD um, filled up, auto PFD filled up, my Mustang PFD. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I had to fish like this the whole entire time with the PFD wrapped around my face, making it uncomfortable to fish. But uh, I made it happen, you know. Just fish hard. Any advice I have to give to new new kayakers, new tournament fishermen is, uh, you know, just believe in yourself and just go fishing, you know, and and try to make the best decisions as you can. But that's that was pretty much the wrap up of my my tournament day. Yeah. And again, like literally watching like you always hear guys talk about how they won. Right. Like you always hear like. Mm -hmm them trying to explain every detail but this is the one thing that dom and myself and a few other anglers do is like we we vlog and we video our entire day so there's no there's no we can't really make up any fish stories we can't make up any any you know anything really because it's all going to be on video and right. but it, it it's so fun like no matter how many subscribers you have no matter how many views you get whatever it's so fun to go back and watch I honestly learn yeah. a lot just watching myself as weird as that sounds. Like I just pick up mm -hmm. on things that I wouldn't normally pick up on when I go back and watch through like my video or my footage and to, and to watch other anglers that like Dom's victory out there at San Vicente and same thing with Anthony's victory at the Delta. He videoed too. And then my trail win and you see guys like Greg Blanchard, for example, like when, when these guys that are video themselves do really well it just makes like that victory like so much sweeter when you're able to share it with people and like people can literally watch it because yeah in the kayak fishing world we don't have camera guys we don't have people recording us really so it's kind of on ourselves right. to record ourselves to see you know to to showcase it so it just makes it so much more sweeter when we're able to record it and watch it back right. and, and then share it with our friends and family and our subscribers and like I don't know. It just makes it, it just makes it so nice, dude. Like it was so fun to like watch your video yeah. and then I watch my video back and then, you know, we can like watch Anthony's video and like, that's why Greg Blanche is so popular because when he won that national champ or when he took third at the national championship and people were able to watch it, like, you know, how many guys have taken third at the national championship and literally no one even remembers who they are or yeah. literally don't even realize like, <laughs> like anything really like, Oh yeah, he took third there and, and there's no nothing. But the fact that Greg Blanchard vlogged the whole thing made him extremely popular. And, yeah. and it's so fun to watch because we're all interested in watching that. You know what I mean? So um, exactly. it's just super cool, man, that you're creating content. And it was awesome, you know, as someone who was promoting the event to have a guy like you win the event. It was like, yeah, it's like just freaking, yeah, it's crazy, let's pump right? it out there. Like all the content, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it definitely it's really got crazy. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I got to share it with people. And it's not just, you know, I'm happy for American Bass and what they're doing with KBF. I think that's extremely awesome. But I'm also getting guys that are commenting on my videos saying like, hey, bro, you inspire me. Like, I want to go get a kayak. It's time for me to get a kayak and go hit the tournaments and start making videos too. And I believe that there is a barrier out there. You know, these kayaks are it's pretty expensive and and uh to, it's it's a it's a hard it's it's a hard decision to make to buy a kayak but honestly it's like one of the best decisions i've made in my life is 
upgrading to a kayak and getting a bona fide, getting an XI3, getting uh, really um, knowledgeable about electronics. It's probably like the best thing I've ever made in my life to make me a happier man. Because when, <laughs> when I'm out there and I'm making content, like I'm like, this is, this is the thing to do. This is, this is my thing. This is yeah. my pleasure. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And, that, and that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I know that's, that's super like, we're all out of high school now. We're all not playing yeah. sports anymore. We're all, you know, kind of <laughs> looking for that competitive edge. So yeah. it, it's, it's, it's something that we can do, like you said, for a long, for a long period of our life right now. And, um, the kayak brings all sorts of challenges because we can't get up and go 75 miles an hour across the lake. So we got to dissect the lake even, even farther. And that's why I believe forward facing sonar for a kayak fisherman is so vital because, a lot of our day is spent picking apart an area and what better way to pick apart an area than to use forward facing sonar. You know, you're just able to dissect yeah. everything, right? Yeah. Like when exactly. I was out there too, on, on my spot that I was at, like I literally spent the entire day there and I had a couple of, a couple of people ask me like, dude, how did you spend an entire day in that small of an area? I'm like, bro, there's so much right there. Like just right there that gets yeah. overlooked from, all different kinds of anglers, you know? So yep. the fact that we're utilizing the technology on a $1,500 boat and just like being able to advance our game, it's only going to make us better. And if we do step into a bass boat one day, you better watch out, bro. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be out. able to tear things apart for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I mean, you're right. You're a hundred percent right. Most bass boats, most, uh, anglers that are fishing on the water with a vessel they're probably sitting on top of a fish or they're sitting on top of a rock pile that they don't know about because they're not using perspective mode or they're not using forward facing sonar like, well they're I, always I you, they're, they're always thinking yeah. like where can i go next like let's go way over there the fish are exactly. way over there you know yeah let's run <laughs> let's run the motor let's burn some gas we got 250 horsepower yeah let's go let's go across the lake but yeah. No, sometimes it's that one brush pile that'll hold like a bait ball, just like Tim O'Connor, yeah. you know? He'll yeah. run into a whole bunch of 18s and 19s. Yeah. Yeah. So Dom, um, coming off a big win like this, what and you're also let's also highlight this. You're also sitting in a like your angler of the year right now, first place in angler of the year for the Iron Man series. And for those of you that are listening, first place of our Iron Man event um for the for the AOI is gonna be decided out of your best three events throughout the season along with your finish at the toc which is going to be a three-day toc and at the three-day toc there's going to be two days at one lake and then the third and final day will be at a different location so yeah. we are making this the ultimate iron man like challenge like it's going to be it's yeah. so fun and then aoi will be decided after that third day and they're going to win a Hobie PA 14180 rigged out with some awesome prizes. So Dom's leading the charge in that with a, with a commanding lead and a very good three tournaments. I mean, the only upgrades that you have now are like within the top six or if you get top six or better. So yeah. how do you feel, bro? And like, what's your, what's your goal and what's your plan for the rest of the year? And like, what do you think, bro? Uh, so I don't want to fall underneath the under underneath the pressure of like of winning this angler of the year, but I definitely believe that I could do it. The pressure's on, bro. You're you're sitting first place. <laughs> um, Whether you want it or not, it's yeah. here, dog. <laughs> Just kidding. For sure, for sure. It is it is there a little bit, you know, but I'm trying not to let that like I'm only human. Like a lot of people think John DMA, Brian Lepke they're always top three. They're unbeatable, right? Uh, Anthony Garcia, Shane Lamont, you know, Tim O'Connor. Like, everybody thinks going going from, like, 20th, 30th, you're, you're, you're fitting at, the, like, the 50th percentile. Like, they're unbeatable. But in all actuality, it's just time on the water. Like, you spend your time on the water, and you don't let that get to you. You could – they're just humans, you know? And – uh so I'm just going to go out there and fish. You know, I skunked the other day. You know, I'm not proud of it, but 
I had zero fish yesterday. And uh, so anybody could do this. Absolutely anybody could do this. So my plan is to go out, get my five every single tournament, and uh, just go go for broke, you know, just go in there with a winning mentality, believing, believing in myself at every single tournament, and uh, just fish hard, just fish hard and making the right decisions in the water. So Dom, what what are your plans for this season though? Like what what's next for you? You're doing Otai, I imagine you're doing Otai, right? Um what's next for you, bro? Like what what's on your schedule? So I'm doing the ABA Working Man series and I'll be fishing I believe I don't know which lake I'll be fishing uh this weekend, but Friday I'll be fishing and then I will be finishing up my season with both KBF tournaments and both ABA tournaments um, over at Lower Otai, Clear Lake. Those two lakes are probably the most important bodies of water that I got to study from now till then. Um, also, I have the West Coast Championship that I set a high goal for myself. And the goal was to win the West Coast Championship because Clear Lake was one of my home lakes that I just got started bass fishing in. So. Uh, that will definitely be like the goal of the goal of the goal. Uh, but if if I do high, if I if I finish highly in the rankings for the KBF overall, um, I'm going to do the KBF national championship, and I'm gonna try my best to get a top ten so I could possibly get in this ten house everybody's talking about. Dude, that is that's so sick. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome to see. There's so much opportunity out here on the West Coast, and it's gonna be so fun to see guys like yourself and other guys that try to go for it um, to see like where they end up throughout the end of the year because it's gonna be for the first time like the West Coast guys, especially in KBF, uh, we got a legit shot at making it into the ten house, even possibly you know being angler of the year for KBF, which would be incredible. And the opportunity really hasn't been out here for the West Coast in, a, in, a, in quite some time, especially with how many opportunities we have. Um, we got Otai, and then we got Clear Lake. So that's four more trail events that we have to try to gain some more points. So I'm, that's definitely something that's on my radar as well. And yeah. we're, uh, we're looking to have a good time, man. It's going to be fun. We'll see, we'll see how it all goes down, dude. Hey, I'll take trail one. You take trail two. <laughs> <laughs> if Anthony doesn't beat us, too, you know. <laughs> I think. Uh, well, I don't think Anthony's going to be at Otai because he's going to be starting back up his firefighter work. So, okay. um, but Otai is going to be fun. It's going to be interesting, and <laughs> it's going to be hard for me not to fish history because I threw up <laughs> ninety nine inches last last year there. Oh yeah. Um, but I feel really good about Otai. We'll see what happens though. <laughs> Man, you're the Otai. big bass specialist, man. You're the I, big bat, yeah, the big bag specialist because that was 99 over at Otai, and then that was 91 or 92 over at San Vicente, which is unheard of. Like 91 inch, 91, 92 inch bags over at San Vicente. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a record hey, high. I, I won't I won't post about this, but for people listening, I, I just think it's kind of cool. I would just know this. I would highlight this if it was another angler. But, you know, this is about obviously like myself, but 91 and a quarter has never been done before at San Vicente in a tournament setting on a kayak. So that's a record at San Vicente is 91 and a right. quarter. And Steve and Tim both looked at that and confirmed it for me. So that was super cool. And then Otai, the 99 inches has never been done at Otai either. Um, JD was right on my coattails at 98.75. And I think Otai, you're going to need 95. I wait, hold on. Let me. That was kind of a freak year for some reason. Like the top yeah. 10 had 90 plus, which was insane. So, yeah. And that was just a one day event. I think you're going to need 90 both days. That's, that's what I'm going to say for Otai 90 both days. I don't know about 90 plus, wow. but I think, I think it's going to take like 180 to win the weekend. But I think you're going to need to hit two day 90. tournament, though. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm you're saying. bringing it down. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, okay. I think 180 to win the weekend. And then I think to win like the trail events, you're going to need mm -hmm. 89 to 91. That's what I think. 
but it could prove me wrong again and throw up top 10 could be 90 plus. I think, it, I think it could be 90 plus. Uh, I think it could be 95 first day and then 86 second day. Yeah. And, uh, that'll be for the pro series and, yeah. and, the the iron. And, Man and this is the thing too, Dom. <clears throat> Yeah. Right now, I know for a fact Cody Henley is coming down, which is the 10 oh, champ. Wow. He's coming. Yeah. 100% he's coming. Cody Henley's coming down. I heard Kamen Rasmussen is coming down as well. He was a 10 house guy last year. Yeah. Yeah. I think Chris Spencer might come. I know Bryce Gibbs and those guys are going to come. Oh, he's, I believe yeah, I believe I believe Pu Yang said he might come, right? Pu Yang's going to come out for o- Otai, yeah. Pua. Okay. Yeah. Old yeah, Pui, sure. Pui Yang is going to come out. And then uh, I don't know if Di- Daigo will come back down or not. Maybe. Daigo is thinking about a uh, high chance, high probability. Yeah. But, so uh, that's the funnest. Watch that's... out for Cody Henley, dude. Like, yeah. Tell him to post more videos. I love his <laughs> videos. His, his energy on his YouTube videos is unheard of. I'm telling you, yeah. I thought I was an animal over at San Vicente, but I looked at his videos recently and I'm like, this guy is an animal. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. And he's a power fishing machine, which oh yeah. If there's a you know, I'm not saying if, but power fishing will most likely be the deal at, at, at Otai. So Yeah, for sure. But Dom, yeah, I think uh I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up from here. Let's go ahead and thank anyone that you want to thank, man. Congratulations again on a huge victory, bro. I'm so stoked for you as a friend and an angler. Um huge accomplishment dude so go ahead and just Thanks, you know man. take the floor and thank anyone that you want to thank man and we'll get brian in here all right appreciate it uh so i want to thank my girlfriend first uh huge sacrifice it's this is a selfish sport so of course we have to be away from home to practice to have a really serious chance at these tournaments so thanks to my girlfriend um thanks to my dog and uh, my sponsors or my pro staff sponsors would be Motor Guide and Wu Tungsten. Appreciate you guys. You guys are making awesome products. And uh, I can't say that there, is, there isn't a day I use, I don't use those products. The spot lock on it is amazing, um, especially in the wind. And those Wu Tungsten drop shot weights, for some reason, they they were hitting it over at San Vicente. So give yourself a, you know, Give yourself the best products and stuff. Those two are awesome. But thank you so much. And I want to thank uh, KBF, Chad Hoover, and Shane Lamont, Amanda, and American Bass for bringing these events out here and and uh, telling me I should fish all of them because it created it created so many opportunities for me. Anyways, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I have to go. I'll see you later, Shane. All right. Thanks, Dom. And, and if you guys want to follow Dom, Double digit angler, right? On Instagram and YouTube. Yep. Yep. All right, buddy. Have a good night, dude. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Later. All right, bye. Dominic Doan, everyone. He is definitely on a tear. He's on a roll. And uh we'll see what happens. See how his, his year uh you know ends up. So, anyways, guys, next up we got Mr. Brian Voigt coming in uh from the Wild West Bass Kayak series. Big win over at the Delta this past weekend so let's go ahead and bring brian in brian what's up my man hey how you doing i'm doing good man and uh first off brian i just want to say congratulations dude you're uh you i i just i'm i'm thankful on how much you support the entire community um i know you're always commenting you're always chiming in you're always very positive and it's so cool to see people like yourself an angler like yourself um excel and do well so congratulations on your big win at the Delta for the Wild West Kayak Series, and uh, just welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks, thanks for having me, man. It's uh, I, I've been at it for a while, so to get a big win is it feels pretty darn good. So, heck yeah. So Brian, let's let's go ahead and throw. Let's I'm gonna throw up this picture really quick, dude. Congrats, man. You, this is this is why you're on the show, and uh, this is getting those wins under our belt just means so much. Like it's, it's not only the trophy, but just kind of just like establishing like that ability to like finally come over the hump in these, these tough, tough events because we face some incredible anglers. So 
to get over the hump at these things and to, and to bring home some cash and some trophies. And it just feels good to be able to do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just like one of those things where it's like, man, like getting over that hump. And, but it's funny. Cause like we wanted to get over that hump again, right? Like <laughs> we want that next one now. Right. Oh yeah. Now I'm bleeding for it. So yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I've been, I've been doing the, the bass fishing like Dom said. And actually it's kind of funny because like Dominic said, um, I'm very close to Dominic because I got my start in a float tube and kick boat and started with bass and tubes and bass and tubes is out of the San Jose area. And they did a lot of, uh, brother sister tournaments with the Sonoma County group. So we've been up, gone up to clear Lake and up there and stuff. And those guys actually showed me a lot way back early two thousands. We're talking like 2005, 2004. Those guys showed me a lot. But I've been fishing forever, but not like that, not competitively. Bass and tubes was the very first thing. And but yeah, you're right. The I mean, there's like so many really, really talented guys out there, and uh, to get a win, it just like it, it just like boosts a lot. So yeah, man, um, that's that's super cool because I started in a float tube as well. I float tube for nine years. Uh, I, I I never did it competitively. I wasn't a part of any club or anything, um, but that was the way that I was able to get off the shore, and I loved it. What kind of float tube did you have? I should have asked Dom, too. but What, what I had a tube? caddis for a while that we okay. were hiking into some of the – that's how I got started. We were hiking yeah. into some of the lakes around here. And then, you know, that was like the – I'm dating myself. The internet was coming around, and I was reading about a lot of different things. Of course, bass and tubes was coming up, so they were showing stuff on there. and. Yeah. Um, learned about that and got involved. And that's how I got into competitive, you know, the competitive yeah. side, because I got a kick boat because I got a, a water skeeter, a water nice. skeeter kick boat and um, decked that thing all out because everybody does everything with PVC, decked it all out and then got a, a, another one from there. But, um, you know, that's what really gave me the I mean, from then on, it, it's been a obsession <laughs> yeah dude, like most so guys. i know that some guys some bass boat guys kind of look at our kayaks and go like dude i can't believe you did all that to a kayak and it's yeah. funny because sometimes i look at a, a float tuber i'm like i had a float tube but then i see some float tubes bro these guys got graphs these guys got polters these guys oh, got yeah. like an incredible amount of gear with them when they're float tubing it's pretty wild it's it's super fun too i love i love sitting in the water man i really oh, it's it's awesome. I mean, I, yeah. I went from that to uh, doing some pro-am stuff as a co and then doing team stuff and then wow. uh, bought my own boat, bought a champion that had a 200 Avenue that just was giving me super problems left and right. But it was I had it for a long time and it was great. And I mean, it was a lot of fun being on a bass boat, but sooner or later, the, the cost of it started racking up and I started seeing the popularity of the uh, kayak thing and um I had to sell my boat, so I sold my boat, and that's when I was like, "I'm gonna get a, get a kayak and start this." And 2000, I got I got the kayak that I have now, and uh, January 2000 started right off. So, in 2000? No, not 2000. Sorry, 2020. Oh, okay. I was like, bro. No, not 2000. I don't think Native was sorry. even around yet. No, two, <laughs> 2020. Sorry, I yeah, my 2020. Dates off. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So two years, two years I've been into it, and it's mm -hmm. been it's been a blast, and. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely so, fun. I like it. It's very competitive. What, and what kayak are you in? And then what kind I mean, of motor I, and electronics do you have? So it's the Titan 10, five and, uh, got the uh, new port now with the iconic, um, uh, 24 volt, uh, battery, which I rave about all the time online. I'm always saying, Oh dude, you got to get the iconic. Cause I'm just really impressed with it. Yeah. And you can go forever in that thing. And, um, mm -hmm. Not much for electronics. That's probably my next upgrade will be electronics. Is I have a, I've just got a little hummingbird um, five Ryan, on there. I think. Ryan, it's I'm small. telling you, I'm telling you right now, man. There was a huge craze about a year and a half ago about the motor guide XI3 on the front. The next big craze, bro, is going to be forward facing sonar. <laughs> There's oh, it's be... it's already a craze. I know. I know. I'm just I saying, hear... everyone's going to be getting on board, bro. Every. I mean. <laughs> And, and you're right. A lot of you, like you were saying earlier about all the lakes down there. I mean, I mean, if you're, well, even Clear Lake and stuff like that, I mean, if you've got it, it's a huge advantage. I mean, just yeah. about 99% of the lakes in California, you're going to be, you're going to have a huge advantage having it. So yeah, that's, that's definitely on my radar to get, get something like that, you know, to, to add to my boat.
because just done how, little little mods here and there. How fast are you getting with the? Um, sorry, what motor did you say you had in the back? That's the new port, the new, the, new the one that a lot of guys are going with. Yeah. So how fast are you getting with that in the native? You have a, you said ten point five, right? Yeah, it's a ten yeah. and a half, and yeah. Eh, you know, I can. I'm doing right around five, maybe a little more. I mean, if I'd light my That's load, good, I, dude. Five, I'm one of those guys that, moving, bro. Yeah, I'm one of those yeah. guys that bring way, way too much stuff with me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I need to. I that's another thing I need to get better at because uh, uh, my my black pack's totally full all the time, and you know, 99 yeah. percent of the stuff I don't end up using are plastics. I'll have a ton of plastics with me, and For I don't sure. end up using them. But yeah. that was I was that way with my kick boat. I mean, my kick boat was weighted <laughs> down. I mean, it was really weighted down. But you know, yeah. and then my bass boat had a ton of stuff. So you go to the bass boat to to this and um, yeah. to the kayak, and you're just well, I can't bring that. I can't bring that. So I mean, you you, you know start what, limiting. You know, it's that. funny. I, I was listening. I was listening to uh, Brian Latimer, and Brian Latimer said, "He goes." Um, if you see me show up to the boat ramp and I got two rods on my deck, you better be, you better, you better, you better be on them because I'm on them. But if you see me show up to the boat ramp with like 30 rods on my deck, you know, you got a shot at beating me because I don't know what the heck's going on. So it's funny because like in these two day tournaments that we've been doing recently on day one, I have like 14 rods, right? And like practice day, I got like a ton of rods. And then the best feeling in the world is going home after day one. It doesn't always work out like this, but most of the time, at least for myself, and I'm fortunate, I guess. But on day one, I know exactly what I'm doing day two, and I only have like five or six rods with me, and it feels so good. <laughs> I don't. I don't really. I'm always bringing what I bring nine. I think. Bring, yeah. I, I think I max out with. I always bring it. I, I think mentally I for up, me, it just helps out to like downsize oh, rods. If I could, you know? I you know, it. I'm sure it would be much better, and I'd be probably more. You know, be a lot better, but. I always bring the same and same stuff and same thing for whatever I'm doing. You know, if I pre fish yeah. and I'm like, Oh, I might need that or I might need that. And so I yeah. end up bringing it, but yes, yeah, so that would be much better if I could narrow it down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Brian, you're on the show because you had a you know big win at the Delta with the wild West kayak series. Yeah. And let's kind of unpack that, man. Let's, uh, let's hear about that. Let's see. Uh, let's see how Brian did it at the Delta, man. So I don't get up to the Delta. I live, I live in Paso Robles, so it's about four hours, four and a half hours south of there. So I don't get up there very much. Last time up there was for the ABA, the two-day ABA, and I went out in a completely different area, different ramp. This tournament, you could go out anywhere in the Delta system as long as it's a public ramp. Um, picked Sunset Harbor, and the reason I picked that area was I was trying to find an idea of where I could go because the wind was going to be blowing, which it was. Um, and it was going to be blowing early on. And so I picked an area that I knew could be blocked out and didn't have a chance to pre-fish. So I had no idea. My pre-fishing, it was all maps and, and internet. So I was all over the internet looking at different stuff, which there was, there was a ton of stuff. A lot of guys do like you were talking about earlier about content and stuff. And I've tried that, but I'm not too good at editing yet. Um, but, um, ended up going into a, uh, area that's got a housing development and such with a lot of the coves and such to it went back in there and started uh, the wind was already blowing but uh, picked up the drop shot and was working around all the docks and such and uh, picked up a, a limit pretty quick in an area that i saw on maps uh, just looked really good for that so i had a limit fairly quick but it wasn't very big limit um but like like the aba i was thought well there's going to be guys crushing a hundred plus inches easy. But, um, so I was, I was content with it, but I knew I was, my feeling was, well, I'm going to have to get a bigger fish somehow. And I kept going and I kept catching a lot of small ones, a lot of small ones. And, um, and I came out of one of the coves and it was just blowing. So basically I, I, I almost set up these drifts. I'd be drifting along this big canal and I'm throwing either a swimming worm or, um, the chatter bait. And um, had those right here. Uh, it was the jackhammer, and the the swimworm was the zoom one. And uh, started getting bit on those. And then I had the big one on the chatterbait, and uh, that let's, right at that point. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and show this gigantor. <laughs> yeah, that one felt good the when that one is... came in. That felt really good, actually. And, and 
you know, that's when you get a fish like that. You're like, well, maybe I'll get big fish, you know, because you know yeah. you're thinking all oh, guys are gonna have a limit of those, you know. But that is um, a tank. Did you weigh it? Yeah, seven and a half. <sighs> it was a seven and a half. I I had to weigh it. I was like, yeah. And it was funny because you're sitting there trying to do that as you're drifting. It seemed like twenty miles an hour, just cruising through there, and you don't want to drift that far. And that's why you need that XI three, bro. Oh, it's yeah. I mean, that's why the whole time I was going, oh, the guys at the bow mount are just killing it right now. I know they are, but you know, I'd, I'd sit there and turn the motor, turn into the wind, and cruise back up and set up another drift kind of thing. And so, and what was get, your what was your chatterbait setup? Because I know this one kind of took you into the grass, and there's a yeah. little bit of drama with it. You weren't sure if it was on, and then you felt the oh yeah. Shake. When I so when I first hooked it, I I felt it just felt like I was dredging up the you know because the 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 uh, tide was all the way out. Um, I was, there's obviously weeds. You could see the weeds, but they were like in clumps. So you're, you're hitting along these along this channel and you dig it in and you pull it up. And there one, one or two casts, I had a bunch of weeds on it. And this one, I pull it up and it just felt heavy. And then all of a sudden it started, <laughs> it started definitely fighting. And I thought I had a striper and luckily I didn't. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I got it up and got it in the net and, What's your, uh, what's your, what's your chatterbait rod set up? Like what, what kind of, nothing kinda special, rod you like? nothing no? special. It's a, uh, what seven, three pal. Um, it's not a glass. Like a lot of guys use the glass and stuff. It's just something I've used for a while. And, uh, what do I got? A, a Shimano reel on there with the, I was actually, a lot of guys use heavier line. I use 12. I mean, I was using 12 pretty much on, I know a lot of, <laughs> a lot of you're pound, crazy. Dude. yeah, 12. I actually got my, Ooh. my, uh, my personal best at Margarita on the same setup, exact same setup with a chatterbait with 12 pound. And that was a 12 pounder. Um, but what? I just, are you serious? Yeah. On yeah, a chatterbait? That was in, yeah. On a chatterbait at uh, Santa Margarita Lake, which is close by. Wow. Um, and that one's got a lot of big ones in it, but. Yeah, I mean, twelve I, pounder. I know 12 that's that pound twelve pound. Nobody uses twelve pound line practically on the delta, but I I had twelve pound line on there. I know that most guys go like fifteen or they go straight raid or something like that, but I just kind of twelve pound. Huh? Uh, I guess so because if they would have broke <laughs> off, I would have been. I'll never go to the delta in less than fifteen. Hey man, man, hey hey, it worked for you, bro. Hats off. Yeah, um, that's awesome, dude. I, I guess I've got lucky, and that you know. It's funny because the no, top it's all about, three. It's all about what you're confident in, man. That's all yeah. that it is. It's all about what and, you're confident. And I, uh, yeah, you could say, oh, well, you got lucky and got that one. But the interesting thing was the top three, even the top four. I mean, Ricky came in third and then Anthony, which I got a story about Anthony too. Anthony's a good buddy of mine. Yeah. And um, he, he took uh, second, right? Yeah, he took second. And Friday night, uh, they had a thing where you had to get the identifier and stuff and you had to print it out and color and you had to have it. Cause they weren't, cause it was so, the Delta so big. There was, it was hard to meet up in one place for everybody and do a captain's meeting. So it was basically, they told people to, you know, get it printed out or pick up one from somebody. So Anthony uh, told me, Hey, why don't you come by? I'm at sugar barge. And when you get up here, um, come by and I'll grab, I'll give you one. I'm like, cool, man. I went, I went by there and he had one and gave it to me and we chatted a little bit. And then we talked, you know, cause I knew that forecast was windy. I go, oh, you guys went out today? And I go, yeah, it blew like crazy. And I'm like, eh, okay. And so you know, I left. We didn't talk about where we were going or nothing like that. And the next morning, I, where I launched out of, he launched out of uh, Sugar Barge. And we both were going into this area at this exact same time from different ramps. And we both kind of waved at each other and kind of laughed and go, oh, you're going in here too. But my mm-hmm. idea, my thinking was, oh, there'll be at least 20 guys coming up in here. You know, I, I thought it'd be elbow to elbow with guys. But literally all day, I probably saw, well, I saw him a couple times and um, maybe one other guy back there and one bass boat. I was really surprised there wasn't more back in there. And, but um, it worked wow. out. But he, he came in second. He had a, that was the other thing I was getting at is the top three all had a kicker fish. They all had, you know, they had okay yeah okay limit but that kicker fish is what what really did it so. yeah i'm looking at the standings and brian had 87 inches yeah. um anthony had 86.25 so yep. just 0.75 difference yeah he was close he was and really then close. there was a pretty big gap all the way down to third was 79.75 so that's like man it's almost six and a half inches 
Yeah. It was definitely a tough showing out there. I mean, there's some big, big names that kind of struggle a little bit. Um, yeah. There was only 15 limits caught um, out of 74 anglers. And, I mean, looks like Garrett Clark struggled. Uh, Damian Thal Damn. struggled. Talked to him at the ramp when I was John Myers, out. Taz. Yeah, some big Shane, names. Shane Jones, David Brofka. I mean, Brian... Brian got him good out there at the Delta. Uh, That's awesome. But Let's I, go ahead and I, I I'm gonna throw eight. up Anthony's fish real quick. I, I was able to grab it. Oh, he cool. caught a he caught a pretty good tank too. Yeah, he did. Did he catch that on a chatterbait? You know, or you know, uh, I'm not sure what he caught that on actually. Undisclosed. I Undisclosed. I don't. I know he said, but I don't. I didn't. I don't know. One thing um, for sure, Brian, that you can tell us: these hmm. Delta fish fight like no other. I, mean, oh, I thought it was a striper. I I was <laughs> I was I already had it in my head that dang it, I it's a striper. I'm gonna be depressed the rest of the day. No, it comes up and it's a I mean that mouth was huge. I thought it was bigger Gosh. than seven and a half. And that I got insane. it in the net. That was my I don't think I was even breathing until I had it in the net <laughs> and got it in the net. And I mean I'm 55 years old, so I mean it, yeah. it's you know. So I got it in the net and then I'm like, dude, that thing's so huge. Awesome, dude. <laughs> So that I was so I was stoked. That was pretty stoked. Yeah. It's a great feeling. Heck yeah! So Brian, uh, I know you fished the ABA and you fished the Wild West. So what what else do you got planned for this year after this big win? Um, there's a benefit uh, tournament. It's not a part of any club or anything at Nasimeno this this Saturday. It benefits uh, first responders and uh, military vets like myself and Anthony. Um, awesome, dude. Thank you for your service, Brian. No problem. We're army vets. Yeah. And and so uh that one's gonna be really cool. It's they don't have a huge turnout, but they're man, they're uh they're uh, uh the raffle's gonna be awesome afterwards. And you know, anybody can get into the raffle. There's got a ton of fishing stuff they're gonna be raffling off. And well, Brian, an, semi is it on Tourney X? Um no, they're doing boat? eye angler, they're doing it on eye angler, and it's called okay. Bass Bash. Something well, like hey, that, that, that. send me send me the link, and I'll put it in the description for those of you guys listening, and you guys could check it out and and head out there. Yeah, uh, you can still get on there. They they're doing a um, captain's meeting at seven, I think, tonight, but they'll do another one on Friday night. Um, so they got that, and then um, up to Comanche for the Wild West uh, Bass Nation Dual Tournament will be the next one in June, and um, then back to. I'll get into uh, the next ABA in July up at Clear Lake, man. And yeah. the, my my goal is to uh, do the get the three in for ABA, and uh, that would be uh, Clear Lake and then Maloney's. I can yeah, make man. those on my on my schedule so far. Yeah. That's that's pretty much uh, that would be this year, pretty much. Awesome, man. Are you uh, are you gonna fish the Working Man series after you saw it, or? Um, I, I want to look into it more. Definitely want to look into it more. There's a lot of there's a lot to that actually. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about it too, and just one thing to think about, like if you go fish those tournaments, you know, during those months, like I know July clear Lake won't be there, but if you're fishing a tournament at clear Lake or for another series or at Comanche or whatever, I'm pretty sure Comanche and those lakes are on, you know, the working man side of things. So you can kind of just have the identifier there and see how you do. And you're going to be practicing and fishing a lot anyways, you know, so true. something to think about. That so, is, it is. Yeah, oh, yeah Brian. I mean, I, I really like what ABA is doing and they're uh I I, I think it's gonna grow. That's the one thing that got me into it was into the kayak thing was I just saw this huge growth happening out in the West. And yeah, um, you know, you go out to these tournaments and there's a hundred plus guys showing up. I mean, back in the days of bass and tubes, uh I did a couple of uh there's there's a, a tackle place called Coy Coyote, uh, Coyote Bait and Tackle up in yeah. uh uh, by um, uh, Gilroy and such, and they did these opens up at a, um, a Coyote Reservoir, and I mean it was those are fun. There's a big, big fish, and there's 50 plus guys showing up in kick boats and float tubes. But you know, when you got a hundred and something guys showing up in a kayak tournament, that's that's fun. That's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, heck yeah, man, it's super fun, and I I love the community and everything that's going on out here in the West. It's just yeah. really exciting. We got a lot of opportunity. And uh, it's really cool to see you pull out a big win, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Heck yeah. Is there anyone you want to thank or anything as we kind of wrap this thing up or any, any last thoughts? You know, I, I, 
I got to thank my wife and my daughter. They're the ones that let me uh, do this passion for so long. I've been doing it. You know, I had my daughter on the back of my bass boat playing Barbies when I used to run around and, you know, when I could do that, but um, yeah. when she was a lot smaller. So that's my big, that's, that's my sponsors, you know, and um, really just enjoy it. man. I just appreciate yeah. it. Heck yeah. Well, I know that this might not be the last time that we see you on here, dude. You, uh, you, you got some a lot of a lot of confidence, man. That was a big win for you out there at the Delta. So, congratulations again. Oh, my last question: How much did you end up taking home from the event? Um, well, cash I just, wise, the way the money, like how much money oh, did you win? Yeah, I think I just saw it. It was a uh, two thousand for the win, a hundred bucks for big fish, and a uh, hundred dollars in contingency. Is what I nice. just saw. Sweet, oh. man. Not a bad payday for one day. Nah, not at all. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. I, I love seeing, you know, as we continue to grow the sport, the payouts get better and better. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's getting to that point now where we can pay our mortgage with some of this stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that, but we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there, yeah. But Slowly no, it's, it's, it's awesome. The growth is is awesome. I, I love what some of these organizations are, you know, doing and coming up with. and yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, thanks, Brian. I appreciate your support always. And uh, I'm looking forward to having you back on the show. And I'll see you. I will for sure see you at the at Clear Lake in July. Clear Lake. Yep. yep. I'll be there. All right, Brian. You have a good rest of the night, buddy. Thank you, man. Appreciate All it. Right. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right, all righty, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys hanging around. Brian's story on the Delta, man, what an incredible fish. Um, what an incredible you know, achievement to beat all those anglers out there at the Delta. Um, it's just fun to listen to him. He's always been he's been super supportive of the show and, and YouTube and everything. So it's cool to see when good things happen to good people. Um, you know, kind of closing the show out tonight with a little bit of what happened with me out at San Vicente. Um, you know, went into my practice. I had a practice day on Friday, had a great practice, found some fish, found some beds, ended up going to an area pretty close to the boat ramp, caught a quick limit on day one, uh, caught a few bed fish on day one. And then on day two, kind of scratched my head a little bit before day two kind of thought, you know, what, I'm just going to kind of go to an area, go to the area where I caught my bigger fish on day one and pick it apart a little bit more. So I ended up going to that area close to the boat ramp and caught all my fish there literally didn't even leave that whole area the whole entire day and ended up catching 91 and a quarter inches made a huge comeback on day two ended up taking first place in the my first ever kbf trail win um which meant a lot to me i'm, I'm super stoked to be able to get that trophy and um kind of get that big win that big national win under my belt as well it felt really awesome and I'm super stoked about it. And then ended up making a uh, third place in the pro series and then third place in the Ironman event and ended up cashing like $4,000 and man, it was just an incredible weekend. Um, I, I was able to vlog the whole thing on my YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check that out, just go ahead and check out Bassum's fishing on YouTube. It's the most recent upload and I got it, you know, all the footage of all the big fish. And it was funny cause going into the last hour of day two, I was sitting about 86 and a half inches. I found a Cinco bite with an hour left. Um, there was some deep grass and like 15 feet of water. Dropped that Cinco down there. I was ripping it through the grass because um, I caught most of my fish on drop shot. And when I would rip that fish or with that Cinco out of the grass, they would eat it. And found that with about an hour left and was sitting at 86 and a half inches with about 20 minutes left. I hook into a, a big fish takes me out to deep water and the hook just comes out. I didn't get a good hook set in it. Sometimes when you're Cinco fishing, um, you don't really know that they eat it. And I didn't realize the fish had taken it and I got a crappy hook set on that, on that, on that fish. So it was a giant would have helped a lot. Probably would have helped sweep the weekend, but anyways, had to brush it off, called a couple friends and I'm like, dude, I'm, that was a big fish been grinding for two days. It hurt. And then with literally about four minutes left, so like 241, I hook into another big fish and land it, take the picture at 243 and 244. And with all the things going on right now, um, if you don't take your picture by before 245, which was lines out, like not even a second after 245, 
So I was just tripping out, shaking, getting the, and I got the photo and ended up winning the trail. And, and like I said, third place in both the other events, just an incredible weekend. Um, looking forward to June. Going to take a little bit of a breather this month um, in May and kind of, you know, just take some family vacations. Been going pretty hard the last few months, going to the Delta and, and Paris and uh, San Vicente. So May is going to be a little bit of a breather month for me. And then June going to go hard at the end of the month, especially for that that lower Otai event with KBF and ABA. Um, just stoked, you guys. And I'm, I appreciate your guys' support. Um, that's going to do it for tonight's episode. Again, congratulations to Dominic and Brian for some big wins this past weekend. Uh, looking forward to covering more events. If you guys got any questions or comments, you guys go ahead and find me on Instagram and ask away at Bassums Fishing. Till next time, till next time, guys. Keep your thumbs ripped, and I'll see you guys on the next one.